How you doing guys? I just want to show you I just got another delivery of uh, World War II stuff and uh, this is for the military museum and uh, let's see all this stuff just came yesterday and yeah, check this out yeah World War II camel cigarettes one carton still in the, the original carton isn't that amazing? Uh, I think there's uh, 24 packs of cigarettes in there so I got that we got World War One and World War Two Red Cross uh, arm bands over here. We have uh, detonators. You know they used uh, for the charge for the uh, dynamite. And check this out: blasting caps, World War Two. They'll uh, look good in my explosive cabinet. Here we got another uh, Red Cross uh, cabinet. Okay, these here. Uh, these are brand new, in the box, never opened, uh, World War II machine gun solenoids. Okay, we're going to open one right now, and I'll show you what's in it. All this stuff is very, very hard to find, but uh, I keep finding it, and the museum keeps getting better and better and better. Okay, let me open this for you. Yeah, everything was really packed good back then. Okay, we're taking that out of the original box. A lot of this stuff is uh, put in cosmoline too, so it all uh, it won't rust. Look at that! Couldn't pack it any better. There it is, brand new. It's a 12-volt uh, solenoid. And uh, this goes on the back of a 50-caliber uh, machine gun. See, on the buffer plate. And uh, when you hit the uh, button and 12 volts go into this, uh, the solenoid pushes this rod out about 2 inches. And it hits the butterfly trigger. And that's what activates the machine gun when the machine gun is in the wings of the airplane. You ever wonder how the uh, machine guns are fired in the airplanes? Well, they use uh, 12 volt electric solenoids. Okay, so I got like four of those. And uh, yeah, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, these are all uh, M1 Grant uh, slings, all original. World War II, all dated 1941 to 45. Okay, I got a, uh, a few of these uh, 10 inch M1 Grant bayonets. See that? In 1943, all the 16 inch bayonets were called back and they cut them all down to 10 inches. So if you find a 16 inch bayonet, it's definitely worth more than a uh, 10 inch. Okay, these are T&E's. See, they adjust the uh, height, they higher and lower the uh, machine gun on the uh, tripod. T&E's they're called. And they got a whole bunch of those. These are flash suppressors for the 50 caliber barrels. See? Flash suppressors. And uh, I even got some uh, M17 diaphragm landmines. See? There's no powder in here or anything. See? We just uh, take the top off. See? The plate comes off. And here's the, uh, the igniter. See? That's a detonator with the safety pin in there. See, and that goes in there, the top goes on, you know, of course this would have, uh, you know, black powder in it, and uh, these are the blowout holes. See that, so a bigger area would blow up when the uh, landmine goes off. So we got a few of those, and uh, over here, look at this, World War II radios and switchboards that were never opened. The radio's been in that box for 77 years. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so we're going to lift this wood up. Okay, this is the uh, packing slip back then. 
Look at this. 11 1943. Look at the date. Unbelievable. See that? Okay, so we, uh, we take that. We're going to open this up. Yeah, everything was really packed really good back there. Back then. Okay, we take the top off. Yeah, look at all these bags here to keep the uh, moisture out. Yeah, all these were put in uh, to keep the moisture out. Look how nicely things were packed. Okay. All waterproof stuff. And this is going to go into my uh, radio display in the museum. Probably put them in a couple of machine gun bunkers. Let's see if I can lift this up. Look at that guys, with the original data plate on it, brand new, switchboards and radios. Here's a switchboard I opened this morning, brand new. The, uh, this would go on the, uh, the soldier's chest, See, just like that, the straps would strap it around and uh, this would go on his ears and uh, he'd work the switchboard. The switchboard would actually be at the uh, headquarters machine gun bunker and then they have to wire everything to the, to the uh, foxholes. Uh, nothing really had transistors back then. Everything had to be wired up. Okay guys, and check it out. A whole box of 48 star flags, World War II. See that? I already have 4,000 flags, but you never have too many flags. Okay guys. Hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, we're always getting more and more stuff for the uh, military museum. I never have enough. I have a very bad spending habit. <laughs> you guys take care. Thanks a lot for watching.